Um, moving on to our last topic. This one will probably be a little quicker. Is Sonic Forces. So, it's a multi-platform game coming out for all, you know, basically all the modern systems, including Switch. And we finally got a look at, like, it has, like, a, mo- a more modern Sonic and a classic Sonic. And, like, there's this crossover storyline thing going on. I don't know. It's crazy. We don't really know enough about it to understand what's happening. But what we did finally see in uh, some footage released by Nintendo and then finally some more footage released by Sega. Sega! Seriously, uh, if I can find a way to say that, every podcast will be so yeah, happy. Yeah, right, Love right, that old right, Sega yeah, sound. I know, right? Oh, my God. Oh. Oh. I just realized... Um, you got it's already happened for you folks, but I'm totally bleeping over my, me doing it and bringing up the actual. Oh thing yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, right. anyways, so <laughs> nostalgia, baby, oh, it's yeah. hit me hard. The thing is, I grew up with Nintendo. I didn't even own. Well, I did own a Genesis eventually, but like it was kind of an afterthought system. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, but but God, still, that, just, that was just probably the, one of the more iconic oh, things. Oh, that of was starting so it iconic. Uh, that one and the uh, I, I'll always remember the GameCube one. Yeah, right. Yep. <laughs> that that was always really cool. Um, the N sixty four logo spinning was nice, but I don't remember any sound yeah, effects no, with no. it. Um, oh, and the ta-tun! yeah. What system was that? Uh, I don't remember. Was that? Oh, been a game too. It might have even been a yeah. system. Oh, oh my you, god! I mean, you, you can't even forget the classic Apple. <laughs> oh my god! Um, so Sonic Forces. Uh, we finally have some footage of like a classic area. Um. It's Green Hill Zone. No surprise. Mm-hmm. It, that's come back several times. This time it's like been ported into like a desert, it kind of looks like. Um, we don't know the storyline implications of it. But um, what we do know, at least from my perspective, is I think it looks good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The whole reason we're talking about this instead of Mario Kart 8, which we talked about last week, is because there's a lot we can talk about with Mario Kart 8, but at the, point, uh, at the time we're recording this, we haven't played it yet. Uh, by the next podcast we record, we'll, we'll have played Mario Kart 8, and I guarantee we'll have some, some thoughts on it. But right now, it's kind of, uh, I want to know what's next. And Sonic Forces is a game coming out you know, later this year. I, might, I don't know the date off the top of my head. But, man, you know, visually it looks fantastic. Yeah. Um, it, it's definitely classic Sonic in all the ways I love. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, the whole game's not going to be this way. The, you know, Sonic is it's kind of like generations and stuff. Like there's going to be different aspects to playing. You know, whether it's a three D plane, whether it's a two D plane. Um, but at least what we see, it looks good. It, like Sonic does this a lot, where they where the first things they show you look good, and then, and then they're kind of hiding the bad stuff behind closed yeah. doors. And then the closer you get to really start realizing, oh wait, here's some bad stuff. Here's some more bad stuff. Here's some more, like oh, and then it comes out like okay, this game's not that good. Yeah, right. Um, and the last Sonic game to come out I got excited for was Sonic Lost World for Wii U. It was pretty good. Um, I really, really enjoyed it. It basically, to put it in a nutshell, it was the Mario Galaxy of Sonic. Like, literally. Like, it felt like they literally just look, took Mario Galaxy and it turned it into a Sonic <laughs> game. Nice. Um, that's what it felt like anyways. But uh, the, the, the crux of that game is that there was about two or three stages that were just really badly designed. Um, but you um, subtract, the, like, rip those stages out, the rest of the game is fantastic. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I felt like a game where they just didn't keep the consistency, but they had the right idea. Uh, with this game, you know, I, I don't know what they're doing, but it's got to get a Sonic Generations feel, which is more 2D side-scrolling. Um, I like it a lot. And, it, again, I know, folks, I know about the Sonic trap. I yep, get it. Yep. Like, it looks good, I'm getting hyped, and it's going to suck, yeah. and then I'm going to complain about it and be like Sonic's dead and then they're going to tease a new Sonic game and it's going to look good. I'm going to yep. get hyped because like they had Sonic Boom which sounded really really cool, looked really really cool in concept, came out on Wii U. God, Sonic Boom sucked. Absolute garbage. It was a terrible game. Um it was passable on 3DS. The 3DS game like they made two different versions of it. The 3DS game was actually okay. I wouldn't say great, but it was okay. The Wii U version that everyone was hyped about was so yeah. like oh through a big red button former developers from Naughty Dog that made Uncharted and The Last of Us and you guys suck this is a <laughs> terrible game <laughs> terrible Sonic game okay oh, maybe they can make man. a different kind of game but they yeah. were, we're not going to make it a Sonic game they like made like a brawler team beat them up yeah like I I don't I don't even know how to describe it platforming thing mm-hmm. it was not good yeah. 
Um, and I really wanted it to be good because I really believe, like, oh, my God, it's a Western studio making it that has, like, guys that have made, like, big games. But it's like, yeah, it might be guys who have made big games, but they might be, like, the grunt workers versus they, they probably, the, it was, the people who actually come up with the creative ideas. Yeah, they they almost tried to take a classic and make it into a, like, a big, a, big arch game, you know. Big AAA. Like, yeah. That's why, like, I'm not saying, tri- like... Sonic, uh, the, you know, Sonic Forces is like a AAA game, supposedly, but we just, I don't know. It, it looks good. That's yeah. all I can say right now. Is it just looks good. They attempted to do what Breath of the Wild did for Zelda, where they kind of brought it into a <laughs> massive 3D. But the, but this is an example of failure, failure at, at doing it. it. Yes. Thankfully, yes, Breath of the sure. Wild didn't do that. Oh, Even sure. if there's things you don't like about Breath of the Wild, most of you can admit it's pretty dang good. Yeah. And they could build off it. Um, that game's not a game you build off of. That no. Game. And the thing is, that's they the really game you throw on the they, oh, you know how much like money they put behind it too. Like Sonic Boom, they had the, the two different versions. Plus, they had the cartoon series oh, for it. And the thing is, the Sonic Boom cartoon series wasn't half bad. Yeah. I don't know if it's still ongoing. It probably isn't. I don't know, but it wasn't actually half bad. It just sucks that it's based on a video game franchise and it sucks. Mm-hmm. Like the games suck. Um. I don't know. I, I gotta go and watch some of the Sonic Boom series because I actually want to compare it to the the old Sonic cartoons. The yeah. Chili Dogs. Yeah. Like, like I don't know. I know when you go back and watch some of those, like, Super Mario Super Show and, and, like, the old Sonic thing, like, they're probably not that good. But I liked them when I was a kid. Well, I thought they were they're fantastic. They're still going to be fantastic just because of nostalgia. <laughs> just because of nostalgia. Or I'm going to go back and realize, like, ah, these really aren't that good. But I'm enjoying it. Like, no, yeah, I, I, yeah. I can watch it and be like, okay, this isn't really that good. Well, right. It's like when I watched The Legend of Zelda cartoon. I know in my heart it's not a good cartoon. Yeah. But I love it. Yeah. It's kind of like, I've always been that way with, like, the, the Mario movie. Yeah. Like, yeah. I know it's a terrible movie, but God, I love it. Yeah. I just love it. Look at the little bomb bomb cranking up that McDonald's toy and letting yeah, go. Yeah. Pull things up. The, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, just everything about that movie just it makes me smile so much. Um, but I know it's such a, I'm one of those people, I guess I just like terrible things. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, I hey. love, like Zelda 2 used to be my favorite yeah. Zelda yeah. game, and most people agree it's one of the worst Zelda games. So it's like, yeah. hey, I think Breath of the Wild is not the best, and one of the best games ever made. Actually, I think it is the best game ever made, so. Yeah. Is that terrible? Oh, I have a terrible opinion. Yeah. So what are you about to throw at me? Oh, yeah, yeah. So kind of like your, t- so that explains a lot about your team. Oh. 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 Hey, no. Oh. You can't go the wrong with Link's Paradise. I should, I should have, I should have, you know, I should have went all out with the Zelda thing, and uh, and made it Evan Evan Tide Paradise, ah, or Evan Tide Island yep, from the game. Yep. Too late. It's Link's Paradise. Yep. Um. Anyways, but Sonic Forces. Sonic Forces. I know we keep getting off topic yeah, because yeah. the thing is, I wanted to talk about the game, but there really isn't much to to talk about. Yeah. Um. The gameplay just looks really good. It looks like classic it Sonic. It does. Um, which is the intention of that particular stage, and it's hard. That's what, that's the thing. Like, it looks really good, but I need to see what the new stuff is. Like, right. when you bring the classic stuff into a new setting, you're doing like, yeah, it looks good. It works good. The enemies look fine. Like, yeah, there's some changes here and there, but it looks good. It, it already worked. But so, yeah, so you're it, using something that yeah. already works, so of course it still works. Yeah. But generally, right. um, there are some complaints with ukulele that um, like the Banjo Kazooie thing, but it's too much like Banjo Kazooie. Which you're like, how could that be a problem? Yeah, yeah, no. I don't know how it could be a problem. Some people apparently love it. Some people hate it. So it's kind of... Well, those people are weird. Until I play it, I don't know. Yeah. And that's the same thing with Sonic Forces. Until I play it, I don't know. But I got to say, they piqued my interest. Yeah. Like, Sonic Mania piqued my interest. But again, that's like remakes of old games and stuff. The Sonic Forces is what I'm trying to get hyped for. And if it's a good Sonic game, again, that might be the first time we see a multi-platform third-party game and actually get the gauge what it does on Switch. Yeah. Because third parties are kind of in the prove it stage. And it's like, okay, well, we need games to release right. to prove it. Like, like uh, there's this guy, um, and I know this is kind of pivoting the topic a bit, but uh, I feel like it's relevant because it's a third party game. There's this guy, I don't remember his name, and I'm kicking myself for not remembering it. He was on the latest podcast for Kind of Funny Games. Um, or, yeah, I think it was the Kind of Funny Games podcast. And he said things like, you know, well, the Switch is a success, but he, was, he, he had a bad experience with Nintendo with Wii U and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, and he is, I think he's an indie developer, 
And he's just like, you know, why would you bring your game? You know, you have a huge marketplace, 100 million users on Steam, you know, 200 million if you count Steam plus PlayStation plus Microsoft together. Like, why would you bring your, why would you limit your system to, like, Nintendo? Like, Nintendo has policies, like, you need to release your game day and date on our system as you do with the other systems. Um, and I, I kind of wish that some people brought up the I, I wish someone would have brought up the argument that's like, the reason Nintendo says you need to release your game the same day and date on our system as compared to other people's system is because they don't want their consumers to feel like they're lesser. Mm-hmm. That That's kind of Nintendo's ide- ideology. But it's not like, you're not getting like a second tier version of this game kicked out later. Because like, that happened a lot on Wii U. Oh, yeah, like yeah. Watch Dogs 2 came out, you know, eight months after, you know, I'm sorry, Watch Dogs, not Watch Dogs 2. The original Watch Dogs came out like eight months after Watch Dogs released on all the other systems. It's like, yeah. who cares by then? Yeah, right. Like, how can you really gauge third party success if you're not releasing at the same time on all, across all platforms? Right. Um, so I understand the Nintendo standpoint, but I also understand the developer standpoint. It's kind of like, yeah, but you need to understand, especially for indie developers, it's kind of like, the, look, we're struggling for money. If our game's done on these other systems, we're not going to hold it back for six months while we work on the Switch version that we're not going to make a lot of money from in the first place. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's kind of an interesting perspective, but I, I bring that up because he kind of mentions, like, why would a third-party developer, AAA or otherwise, bring your games to Switch knowing when... It, you know, you have to do the same day and date. The cost to it might not, you might not make the money back. Whereas you can just focus on the other platforms and make a ton of money there. And um, he also, you know, brought up a lot of like how many third party games like sell, like Nintendo games sell on Nintendo systems, how many third party games sell. And it's, it's kind of one of those things that, again, you want to see third party success stories that games have to come first. Right. That, that's kind of the thing. Like, I understand why third party games left. Nintendo stayed with cartridges too long. Uh, they really screwed up their their deal with Sony. They, just imagining that Sony and Nintendo could have just been a single entity making video games this whole time would have been amazing. And yeah. Nintendo screwed that up. So, like PlayStation would have never been a thing. It would have just been the Nintendo PlayStation, mm-hmm. and that's what it would have been moving forward. Um, but reality is that didn't happen. And reality is that Nintendo lost a lot of third parties in the transition. We're saying with cartridges versus discs, et cetera, et cetera. He even brings up like the cartridges being like another deterrent on Switch. I, again, I'm not at the level to know the exact figures for like how much it costs to produce a disc versus the cartridge. Um, it's still cheaper to produce the disc, but then again, there's getting you know packaging and like Switch uses smaller cases. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of variants. Tiny that, cartridges. Yeah, there's a lot of variants that affect you know the sale, like how much it costs to get a product. From the factory to the consumer. But the point I was getting at is that third-party games need to come out of the system for us to gauge the sales. Right. Needs to happen. Um, and Sonic Forces, I look at this game and I'm like, this is a game that I'm hoping is good. Because if it's good and it releases the same day and date as all the other platforms, it'll be one of those titles like if I look at be like, hey, look, Sonic sold. Yeah. And, you know, you could argue it's a very Nintendo-like game, which it is. Yeah. It's a very Nintendo-like game, but that's the thing. Know your audience. Yeah, exactly. If you're going to make a game for Nintendo Switch, know your audience. Here's the thing. The audience on Nintendo Switch right now is 90% of people that enjoyed open-world Breath of the Wild. So what games do you think might do well in it this year? I don't know. Do you have any open-world action-adventure RPGs? Mm-hmm. Is there another like Witcher kind of game coming out? Guess what? I guarantee you there's an audience for that kind of game on Switch right now. Oh, definitely. But again, what third party is going to make the, make the diving risk? Is it going to be just with Skyrim? Yeah. Oh, oh, Skyrim came out. No, look at Skyrim. It came out, but it only sold $2 million. I'm like, it's because everybody who wants to play the game already owns it. It's it's been already out probably for like, beat it. It's been out for five, six years. Yeah. They own it on multiple platforms. Like, yeah. like you need... I, I want to see like a new game come out that is by some of these other AAA developers and just release it on the platform. Like, look, like... Zelda is more like traditional open world games than any other game Nintendo's ever made. And the fact that we now know, based on the numbers, it's like a Zelda machine right now. It's sold more Breath of the Wild copies than Switch units. There is a, a crowd there for it. Like, I, my greatest fear with the Switch is games like Sonic Forces and other games are not going to put their best foot forward with Switch. And it was kind of a, an issue we saw with Wii U. It, even Wii but we again, we was more understandable because one different control scheme, entirely right, different. Right. It's not like Switch where it's the same control scheme. Um, you know, besides analog triggers, whatever, it's the same control scheme. Uh, whereas on Wii, it was totally different. So I get it. But and the Wii was massively underpowered. There, you were not getting HD games on Wii because it couldn't do HD. Whereas on Switch, you can get HD games. Right. Um. So, 
I I kind of looked at Sonic Forces to kind of pave the way to, to show like, hey, look, here's a third party multi platform game. Did very well on Switch. I'm hoping. I'm yeah. Hoping. Like, I'm not saying go buy the game if it sucks. Don't yeah, buy yeah, games yeah. you don't you're not interested in. Like, but you know, let us know what you think of Sonic Forces because again, we haven't seen much. Looks good. Yeah. It's got it's piqued my interest. Sega, don't let me down. <laughs> I hate to put so much on your shoulders, but you're like the only company right now putting a brand new game out that's third party multi platform AAA. Um, yeah. For us to actually see, can third party multi platform AAA games sell on Switch and sell well enough to keep making them? Right, right. Um, so, a lot of pressure on you, Sonic Forces, yeah. I know. And Sonic, you always let people down. So, um, it feels I almost don't want to put that pressure on you, but yeah, yeah, that's kind of the state of affairs we're in. Like I know Nintendo kind of prop up, you know, Super Mario. Oh, it sold five hundred thousand copies. I'm like, yeah, but again, that most people would consider like Super Mario Man are more of a B team game yeah. or B tier game, yeah. where it's kind of like, or even just an A tier. Like it's not AAA. It's not a big yeah. budget. Yeah, like sinking billions of hours into game. It's it's more like a a multiplayer, you know, puzzle game. It's fun. Right. You play it with friends. It's great. But, like, it's not... I don't know. It, it, it's got... I, like, I'm not trying to diss Bomberman. Like, back in the day, Bomberman would have been, like, a big AAA game. But it's like... Oh, for sure. You know, the standards have kind of changed, I think, yeah. a little bit. It's yeah. like, I can see smaller studios doing Bomberman. I'm pretty sure it was a smaller studio that did this one. But, yeah. I guess that's all I got to say for this week. I think we're pretty much done. So, yeah. um, do you have any closing thoughts on anything from, you know... How about... Let's go, let's go like this. Because I, I want to start adding some... Uh, you know, p- picking the how about this? What's the f- what's the favorite thing that we did this week on this podcast? Ooh, well, Let's I'm, I'm off, guessing it just has to be the draft because has to be the draft. Yeah, draft was probably the most entertaining part of this whole yeah. podcast. Yeah, um, because uh, even as we got all this news, a lot of dry news. It's a lot of yeah, new Definitely. and like oh, here's a bunch of here's a bunch of recap from like the investor meeting. Here's the 2ds XL. Um, you know, someone retired at Nintendo. It's like there's a lot of big like this is all big news, but. It, there isn't all. I feel like a lot to discuss about it because, like, a lot of the profits are one time. Yep. Um, it's awesome. The Switch is doing extremely right, well. Right. Right. Definitely. But it's like there's only so much you can say about it. Yeah. Um, but the draft. The draft. That was fun. Right. That that was fun. Remember, vote for me. Yeah. <laughs> Link's Paradise. Yeah. Link's Paradise. Yeah. Remember, it's Link's Paradise versus Total Domination. Yeah. Yeah. Who's got the more original name? Come on. Come on. All right. Uh, obviously, for me, it's obviously the draft too. Um. Good times, even though we didn't get T.J. Watt on the Packers. Yeah, I know. That's okay. Um, I guess uh, no, it's it's really not okay. <laughs> it's, really, it's really not. The, the overnight trade. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, this is Nathaniel Ruffle Jans, and as always, I'm joined by Eric Moore, and we are signing out. Thanks for joining us this week. We'll catch you next time. See you.